So the show, the show, the show. Mike's uh, Mike's video here. Now they're apparently attacking Mike's video. He's as glitchy as I've ever seen him. Oh, that stinks. Well, you know what? I have a feeling you're not going to need me for about the next nine I'm not going to need anyway. you for days after this, Raw. <laughs> Listen, everyone. So yesterday might have been, I uh, forget who it was. Might have been the TMZ guy. Anyway. Somebody tweeted out there's going to be a new faction on Raw. So we talked about it a little bit on the show. Ryan Satin. So, Ooh. WWE then, oh, well, word's out. Let's let's tweet about it. So I swear to God, they, they tweet out that a new faction is going to debut on Raw tonight. This was from our front page after they tweeted it. WWE hyped the arrival of a new faction prior to tonight's show. And wrote that they'll be out to cause chaos and shake up the organization structure. It was so nice of this group to send the information to WWE that they will be invading tonight and causing chaos. Allowing WWE to tweet out about this. WWE.com has learned that a new faction is arriving on Raw tonight. The superstars comprising this faction have yet to be revealed. But rumblings around the WWE Performance Center say that the group is out to cause chaos and shake up the organization's structure. They actually tweeted this out before the show. How chivalrous. So if you watch the show, and you're one of the people that was so angry that the faction didn't debut after they had promised it, you're wrong! They did debut. There was a segment where there's some kind of something or other, a generator or something outside the the performance center, and a bunch of dudes dressed in black showed up, and they threw Molotov cocktails at it and lit it on fire. This was like a, a 30 second to one minute segment, and we never saw or heard about them again. That was the debut. It wasn't the ninjas. That was the debut of the new faction. Now, they also had some other things happening on the show. Guys would be cutting promos, but their mics would be going out. <laughs> Is this on? Oh, that made for great television. Boy, did that make for great television. And then, the stupidest thing I've seen in a long time. It was so stupid, it was funny. They go backstage to Charlie Caruso. The bane of my existence! I'm sure she's a nice lady, but her character is just... She's back there and she goes... There was a large noise stemming from this area. There are rumors, she says. Just rumors at this point. That these boxes falling over was no accident. I'm like, you sent Charlie Caruso to do an investigation about some boxes? That, I'm trying so hard not to swear. Some boxes that tipped over backstage at Raw. Who cares? Boxes tipped over. Come on. Hey, go to MVP and he shows somebody and he says, You're, uh, I lost my, my, intercontinental title or u.s title or whatever and and this and that and you're here talking about boxes and he's absolutely right boxes tipped over who cares so to cut to the chase if you're unaware one of their wacky ideas to turn this show around was originally to bring back the nation of domination a militant group of black heels. This was their plan. Now, I can't believe I'm saying this, but to their credit, somebody figured out this would be a really stupid idea. So now we've got plan B. Plan B is Antifa. It's the Portland protesters. It is a group of people that are just out there, in their words, to cause chaos. According to Pro Wrestling Sheet, their sources told them, and I'm sure this is true, the storyline is specific to WWE and not intended to be political. <laughs> Bro, this is your plan to turn this sinking ship around? This is your plan to turn around World Championship Wrestling here? Oh, we've got a 
non-political Antifa group that's going to cause chaos, and they're going to knock over boxes backstage, and they're going to throw Molotov cocktails at some... Like, dude, they go, earlier today, we caught this. It's dark out. What? <laughs> this show is a sinking ship. It's been a, it's been like they, you know, when they hit the iceberg, I've talked about this before in the fall of 2018, they hit the iceberg and the ship started to sink down. It sank down. It sank. And now we're like, the hole is above water. And you know, do we want to try and patch this ship or do something? No, let's just keep furiously throwing water off the ship as it sinks lower and lower. I mean, this is this is the dying days of World Championship Wrestling bad right here. They're desperate. They're throwing everything at the wall. Oh, this, uh, uh, Antifa group, let's throw this at the wall. And and what other stupid stuff? Uh, let's have Nia Jax beat up Pat. N Nia Jax beat up Pat Buck? What? Name one person who cared about this. I know The Rock didn't because he was busy buying the XFL. Nobody cares about this stupid storyline. Brian. Yes? N nobody cared about it in real time because Pat Buck was shown laying on the ground as the comedy came back out again as we do the Three Stooges chase routine throughout everything. So it didn't even give anybody time to register it because there's Pat Buck just laying there. And oh, by the way, now the goofy comedy comes back. I've seen some bad shows, but this one... I mean, there's the theory that, oh, well, they introduced a new group, supposedly, and new this and that. You know, maybe they're, the numbers are going to be up. Dude, I'm telling you right now, I've been wrong before. I've been wrong a thousand times before. But new record. New record. Because, listen, remember that show that had Sasha Banks versus Asuka for the vacant title, as well as Drew McIntyre in the main event against Dolph Ziggler that they spent the whole previous week building up. That one right there hit the new low, the lowest third hour of Raw ever for that hour. This hour, I'm halfway through the third hour. I'm like, dude, this is one of the worst shows I've ever seen. Why am I still watching? Oh, it's my job. Other than that, why am I watching this? And then it hit me, dude, what's the main event? I have no earthly idea what the main event is. They trot out Seth Rollins. Seth Roll the main event is Seth Rollins cutting a promo on Tom Phillips. Seth Rollins channeling his his outraged Colby Lopez about all the people that talk about how bad this show is and how his character is so awful. He's out there. Uh, Tom, Tom Phillips, you're supposed to be an unbiased journalist. An unbiased journalist doesn't... I'm like, bro, I know you're mad at everybody, but come on. Death television. Luckily, it turned around, but it was, like, way too late. I mean, I would have tuned out 15 minutes ago. But, yeah, but you know what? Joe the, the... cuts a promo, and then Ray's kid comes out and does some flips, which was cool. That was, like, the only other good thing on the show. And then we go back to Raw Underground. Fake fighting on a fake fighting show, but this fake fighting is supposed to be real. It gets where, no worse than this, Mike. Where, this was the I, worst Raw of the year. It's right up there. If Name a worse not, one. Same question I asked Dave. Name a worse Raw than this one. Those post, I mean, post-COVID, you know, I, I, I'm sure there's, look, I don't know. This was a disaster for a lot of different ways, and I know we're pushing up against break, so I'll, for the most part, hold my thoughts, but... During that, at the end, why is Swerve Scott, who is in your Cruiserweight title mix on, on your, your big Wednesday show that you go head-to-head -head with AEW with, why is he getting beaten up like that? Why is Montez Ford being drugged? And where are the cops that arrested Jeff Hardy to be there to actually help out Montez Ford? Why can't Tom Phillips act? Why did Charlie laugh while she was doing that just because Garza walked in the scene? Like, you can just pick him from last night. It's insane, and I, I know we'll go through him. Dude, a whole show where they built up Angel Garza hitting on some woman from The Bachelorette, and then all of a sudden he's hitting on Charlie, and the other woman just vanished. No ex- nothing. I guess it was a week ago that, I think it was John Pollock went through, and like he was trying to keep track of everything on the show that didn't make sense. Dude, I mean, is he alive this morning? Because <laughs> what you should do is try to go through last night's Raw and try to pick out anything that actually does make sense. Because by the end of the show, there's virtually nothing. The Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton promo was like the only thing that, I mean, looking at it, it's like this. It's like a different wrestling show. 
It actually is a wrestling show. The rest of it is just a disaster. Any thoughts, Mike? Then we're going to get into what people think about this. The people! Well, I pointed this out on my Twitter, but I'll point it out here again because it needs to be stated again when it comes to their production. There were a combined four fights, not counting what Bobby Lashley and MVP and Shelton Benjamin did at the end to everyone inside Raw Underground, but there were four official Raw Underground fights. They lasted one minute. 57.49 seconds. Yes, I took this down to the half second here. There were a combined 79 camera cuts at that point for all of those. 21 in one. I forget exactly what the breakdown was, but 79 camera cuts from bell to bell in those fights that took place. The fake fights that took place on the show with the fake fights so what are the real fights when Bobby Lashley, MVP, and Shelton Benjamin come out? I mean, uh, when when it's somebody, I, how does this work? This was never explained. Why did the dancers fight for a minute? Why are there three random dancers there? 